Hello, welcome to a demo on DHCP persistence, a uh, feature of Stratix switches. What we have here is a 5700 switch, and we'll be demonstrating uh, DHCP persistence on port 9, the blue cable. This is a feature that we'll configure in the uh, device manager of the switch, memory space and it will be providing an IP address for this PowerFlex 525 uh, single onboard Ethernet comms channel. So in the Stratix device manager, after you've done the express setup, you go into configure and click DHCP and it summons this screen here. And what we want to do is enable DHCP snooping along with, of course, DHCP. DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and it will sense that a device is looking for an IP address and it will provide one. And uh, once you add a DHCP pool table, give it a name, uh, you want to enable these two checkboxes as well, DHCP snooping again and reserved only. And what those do, they're very important, is uh, especially for a motor control application where you may have 20 switches perhaps, a couple hundred motors. Uh, what that does is that isolates the uh, DHCP assignment traffic to your devices to where another switch doesn't automatically assign an IP to this switch's channels, to devices hanging out on this switch. So it's very important. So in other words, this switch will only provide an IP to its ports and vice versa for other switches as long as you have those set. So it's very important. Then what we would do is we'd click DHCP Persistence. Gives us a listing of all of our ports. This is a 20 port switch. So we have 16 copper and four combo ports for fiber or copper. And port nine here is where we're connected. This is where if maybe you had multiple VLANs segmented perhaps on this switch for a multitude of reasons, but select the proper VLAN. Uh, don't forget to give it a scope. The 20.254, we reserve 0 through 19 for uh, management IPs. And then you would give it the IP address for that port. So this is the dot .21 octet. And you would hit save, and at that point you're you're good to go. So this time I'll bring up the controller, Logix controller program again. So from the last demo we have the dot 20 is active with parameters. So it's using its parameters for the IP address scheme. But uh, this DHCP will allow us to take it to the next level. Say your drive got smoked overnight, you need to replace it. Uh, maybe a maintenance tech or, or, or someone uh, isn't available to program those parameters. So out of the box the drive is configured for boot P. Now I know boot P, DHCP, those aren't the same uh, same protocols. So there, there is a uh, I guess a feature of the 525's where uh, it, it, it is capable of supporting DHCP, it's just not listed in the parameter space in C128. That's the communications group, parameter group. Uh, it only lists number one as parameters, number two as boot P. Whereas if you were to buy the E2P card, option card, the, the two port option card, it does list a number three for DHCP, but it does work. We'll demonstrate that here shortly. 
So getting back to what the DHCP gets you is you don't even have to program in the IP then for ADC to uh, automatically uh, configure your drive for you. Uh, with this DHCP applied to port to this specific port that this drive will be connecting to and boot P set as default out of the box it's simply a matter of wiring up power and powering up the device and it will automatically go out to the Stratix the, the Stratix will see oh I got a new device out there it needs an IP it will provide it and then at that point is when once it has the IP that's when ADC in Logix will take over and automatically configure the device so at this point we'll go ahead and demonstrate that so we're still set for parameters on this drive uh, we're faulted we gotta clear the fault go into the communications group C128 set for one for parameters go ahead and bump that up there is no number three it just scrolls back to one so it may be available in a future release but for now this is firmware revision 5 uh, which is the latest uh, as of May 2017 um, in the future it may be a feature where you can actually see it selected in the PowerFlex so we got number two set for boot P we'll go ahead and accept that escape out before I cycle power I want to go ahead and bring up the uh, the dialogue here in Logix so while that's instantiating go ahead and uh, cycle power so it's cycling faulted okay looks like our dialog came up so go ahead and reestablish so it's powering up come back over here to the Logix sees that it's faulted already it's configuring under the status there so it's still configuring it's not online yet it's still writing all the parameters in correlating so we'll go ahead and let that finish and uh, you can also observe the activity in the I.O. tree. So it's still writing all the parameters in. But we're currently yielded until it's back into a running state. So we'll go ahead and let that go. Status running now. And we are now green in the I.O. tree. So there's our dot .21 drive configured for, we say boot P, but it is DHCP. It's, DHCP is more advanced. It gives you uh, uh, more, uh, more features in the environment, in the IP environment. You can get, uh, for example, you can program a default gateway to where the drive would know where to go if I can't communicate through the primary address it'll uh, go upstream via that IP address so so we're green there take a look at the drive we're green can go back in just to verify our C128 change and it's set for two which again says boot P but we are using DHCP Another, uh, I guess, feature of this is, uh, of using the DHCP, is you cannot verify 
what the DHCP provided IP addresses are, each of the octets, in the online drive parameter space, uh, they do not, there, there's no visibility on those. So um, it's one thing to be aware of that could possibly be addressed again in a future firmware release. So at this point, we have removed that extra programming uh, of, you know, the IP parameters, and we have basically taken a PowerFlex drive out of the box, powered it up, wired, wired it in, cycle power, and it's up and running without doing anything other than an electrician wiring it in. So it, it's a very powerful feature of using the automatic device configuration with the DHCP persistence on a Stratix 5700. So th thanks for watching the DHCP persistence with automatic device configuration demo.